With Golden Wind ending, I am finally able to go over my thoughts I've compiled over the course of this journey on our team. Golden Wind has such a great cast of characters, so it's about time that I finally get to this. Oh, and also to reconfirm what this is for comments that I've seen in previous videos of this specific series, these are thoughts I've compiled over the series, not all of them, just a fair amount. Thoughts can vary from what's considered analytical, I guess, to just, hey, I like the voice actors work on this. So, yeah. Starting this off with Panacata Fugo, or well, that'd be Panacata, something like that. I'm not sure how many people thought of this, or think this, or think against this idea, but I always thought that Fugo was one of the more real characters, if that's a way to describe it. Like, most anime, you're supposed to have your group of friends that are ride or die almost all of the time. Unless there's a friend that goes straight up renegade and opposes the ideals of the main group and goes about that and just fighting them. Which is what we were supposed to see with Araki, but he didn't want to do that because it makes him sad. Fugo didn't do that. All he was planned to, he didn't do that. I do like the, the Fugo that we got, just having him approach the idea of fighting against all of Passione and then taking a huge step back to say, nah, I'm, I'm not doing this. It's something that I was actually for. I've seen so many people call Fugo a traitor or weak for not going with the group, but you have to be pretty strong to go against all your friends to never see them again. Fighting for your friends is one thing, which is definitely strong. We saw that in the members that did go, but to be able to stick to your own guns and dictate when you're done, I applaud him for it. Though I do think about where does Resolve work in his decision. Since he didn't go forth to beat the odds, we can assume that he didn't have the Resolve to match the others, or well, we can see it as like a different type of Resolve potentially. One where it's not necessarily going forth to beat the odds, but instead going forth to stand by what you believe. That's a pretty crazy thing because Bruno had the problem of doing so when he was in Passione before he had met Giorno, so I do really want to applaud Fugo on that. Now we finish that thought, on to the next one, which is I did also want Fugo and the group to have more moments in general, but since we had to move forward with the journey, there wasn't really that much time for those moments where you could just sit down and talk about random stuff that comes into Mista's head. People usually look on to go about like the next conflicts, usually how that works in shonen manga, but I believe that moments where you can watch the characters chalk it up is a nice little way to build character, or more so just even like, there's there's many ways you can go about dialogue, there's so many examples too. Uh, this isn't even necessarily Fugo specific, that more so falls in line with the group as a whole not having enough time, so I guess to talk more, that would be great for them. I just all around asked for that. I would like to talk more about the group as a whole at the end of the video, but I think it'd be better if I just talk about groups entirely in a different video. So, still on to Fugo, but on to Purple Haze, which is attribute of Fugo, technically. Uh, I love this stand. I love it being the inner workings of Fugo adapted into an entire stand. Not many stands go about defining themselves outside of the user's action, so I was happy to see how it had acted on its own. Also, it's a Jimi Hendrix reference. Uh, it would be insane for me not to like this stand. I, just, I did a whole book report on Jimi Hendrix back in like sixth grade. And uh, last two things, with the moods Fugo can reach, he's a perfect fit for the Mafia. And I'm not expecting Shameless Purple Haze, to be honest with you guys. Uh, if it happens, it happens. But I'd rather y'all ask for Dead Man's questions. Or just like specific Rohan OVAs that you would like to see because just just seeing it, I I, I don't I'm not really seeing a future for Shameless Purple Plays. If it does come out, again, it comes out. But yeah. Now, moving on to Leone Abacchio, which I swear just looks like Leon, but the E is matters so much. It's actually a big factor. Beginning this with a strong shout out to the voice actor of Abakio. All the voice actors did a great job actually, but Abakio's voice actor in specific helped me get a better liking to the character more than I already did. I guess like my idea of how he sounded in the manga, like in my head, just didn't link up as well as you would think. Uh, most 
know his voice work for uh, My Hero as Aizawa, but in both of his characters, he's able to maintain this sense of position along with however he feels on whatever he's talking about. For example, uh, when Abakio was telling Giorno to leave Fugo, he had this sense of authority and directness with his voice, yet you could also hear the pressure Abakio's facing because he doesn't want Giorno to be right. It's work like that that helps me just love anime adaptations even more because being able to understand and feel what the writer is trying to convey is one thing, but to have an extra factor that helps support that, like you can hear it itself, it just makes it all the better. On his character, I like that he had a Stephen King-esque type of approach with him. Uh, it's even more interesting that Araki had worked in his theme, like he was trying to convey the whole it's not about the results type of thing we had going. By Stephen King-esque, I mean, it's like, like say the person dies, it's like, hey, did the, the death wasn't your fault, and da da da, da. That's, that's a thing that we've definitely seen. Uh, normally, Abakio's character would be one where the idea would to be redeeming himself in the cop world in some way, shape, or form, but to instead, uh, it's him being the best in an underground world that doesn't even support the law is a direction you wouldn't really expect to see in writing. Though it does make sense since Bruno's group are a bunch of people against the world and legal power in their country is corrupt, so they have to be the ones to take affirmative action. So it is like redeeming the cop version of himself by still being an honest and good person, just it's in a different realm of the world. Uh, next thought, which is going to sound crazy, most likely, but I actually love the difficult relationship between Giorno and Abakio. I love that one of the reasons Abakio has such a problem with Giorno is because he can see his partner in Giorno. It's sad that there's a bunch of unsaid things between him and Giorno. It sucks that there's a bunch of unsaid things between him and the group in general. Abakio not being the most vocal person about how he feels makes complete sense for the character, but it's unfortunate to go out the way that he did and not have those final interactions with the group. But... It does make a lot of sense if we're going to be real about it. His death was supposed to be an abrupt and out of the blue type of thing that happens like that. And it's did it, it did its job to both the cast and the audience. As for the final character interactions, I feel like that's just me more so wanting a character to go out with nothing left behind than it being a necessary thing. But since Abakio went out playing such an important part in the group, that should be enough. If Abakio is supposed to be one of the sleeping slaves that's meant to help by freeing another, which he is, then what I'm asking for is extra. Though I still think it'd be, it'd be good, good extra. Some nice extra, you know how it is. Um, next thought, I love his design. Not many main group characters have a dark color palette like that. Not even in just JoJo, just in anime and JoJo. You don't really see group characters to have like the type of... I guess most people say goth. I, I I'm like kind of reluctant on like, like that's not really goth, but it's 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 a moody type of color palette. Oh, well, there it is, moody, moody blues, and then connecting. But but yeah, uh, and I also love the design of moody blues and its ability. I've seen people have problems with moody blues for not being that much of a combat stand, but I love this type of design and ability because not everyone has to be a fighter in the universe. It just makes sense that there's going to be different types of stands that work in their own intricate ways. I'm, Araki even had an author's note on this. It, I love it. This this author's note right here explains what I'm trying to convey, basically, with this last line. Now, before the next character, I have something different here in this video. So, if you've ever wanted to help support the channel and the industry in one go, here's the chance. With this video here being sponsored by Crunchyroll, this is now possible. You can go to my link, crunchyroll.com slash Caleb and you can get Crunchyroll Premium ad-free for 14 days. Crunchyroll is this enormous site for anime and manga that I've been using since my Naruto days. Signing up now gives you things like an enormous amount of anime, manga, and drama titles, newest episodes of anime that are out as soon as an hour after airing in Japan, and Crunchyroll itself is accessible on all devices. That specifically lets me watch shows that I can't get enough of like Demon Slayer, Dr. Stone, One Piece, and Fire Force from the comfort of my bed with my phone. And again, that's Crunchyroll.com slash Caleb, find the link in the description, and like I said, Crunchyroll supports the anime industry, so when you check out my link, you support them and this channel at the same time. 
Also, if you do want to see any videos of any of the anime that I've mentioned or haven't mentioned, be sure to leave a comment so that I know which ones that I could be putting focus to. Now next we have Narancha Girga. Narancha for me is easily a huge staple to the team. As a character, I just find him so necessary to the group because of the absolute flair that this character is. To get a bigger grasp on how the idea of Narancha being this flame of the group is, is you can refer to my character analysis on him. But to go over similar thoughts here, the members of the group have to make it a point to not show more emotion than necessary. You have to keep up the face of a gangster in this world, so if you're over here showing the entire color wheel of emotion to not only your friends but enemies too, people might make it a point of that and use your emotions against you as a weak point to target. It's shown that when characters are extremely enthusiastic with showing off of what they've done or how they're in the clear advantage over the opponent, they most likely get smacked up because they leave themselves open in some way because they weren't focused enough. Narancha makes a point of that. Focus or not, he's a threat. And this explosiveness that just makes me love the character so much is just always there. More on his character, uh, I also love his backstory with Araki doing a whole ooh full, full circle poetry type of thing going on with the eye thing that they had Narancha and his mother had going. Next thought, Narancha is a case where more character interactions were needed. Narancha with Fugo, Narancha with Giorno, Narancha with Trish are all interactions that I needed more of. I would also pay for more Narancha and Mista interactions. Those two together, I swear to you, they are priceless. Matter of fact, just get the, get the torture dance group together and have a full-on journey with them. They are amazing together, and I wish I could have seen more of them. On to the next thought, the animation done for his character is truly amazing. I love when adaptations adapt more than you normally expect. I can always feel the anger every time I see anime Narancha or whatever emotion he's feeling at the time, and it's always great. I also think that the voice of Deku did a great job as Narancha. And I'm also slowly realizing that a lot of my hero voice actors are slowly taking over. Yeah, for, just off note, for those that have watched Demon Slayer, y'all notice that too, right? Like, there are some my hero voices in there, and I think that's insane. But, you know, moving on to the next character. We are now on Trish Una? Yuna. Trish Yuna. Now, Trish is a character that did so great for the time that we have seen her. But I think that it wouldn't be that far off to say that she definitely needed more time. Many characters in general need more time. That's definitely what I'm going to be saying here. But I guess considering that the time that we were in when Par 5 was being made, having time for characters that are not the main protagonist, deuteragonist, or main antagonist is something that's not normally seen as much in Shonen. That was also bars. There is only so many anime franchises where characters outside of the main focuses get spotlight even to this day there's very few older jojo parts have this thing of missing out on a lot of potential elaboration on characters that it's most likely fixed by the time we get into that seven eight area of parts trish had powerful moments uh, specifically in the notorious big fight but if we were to have consistent involvement of her character that would have helped even more I know some people will think, well, where would you have more of these interactions and moments in general? And to that, I'm not sure. You want to see more of Trish and the other characters in Part 5, but to do that without adding too much in length to the part already is a conundrum to me, honestly, but that's not for me to theorize at this moment. Next thought, for her character, I love the relationship between her and her stand. I know a lot of people are for the idea of just a stand full on supporting you and helping you through your tough situations. And honestly, I'm for that too. Stand to stand user interactions in general are something that I wish happened a lot more. When you have a power system as unique as stands, but don't have that much user and stand interactions, it's like, man, I wish we did. Granted, I don't want to the magic of it to just disappear from it being overused, so to have these types of things in moderation would be great. Next thought, I think that the whole Diavolo versus Trish thing could have been made even bigger. I understand that all conflicts he faces are products of his past coming to get him, and that's poetry enough, but Trish adding more to it would have done so much for the story. But that's just me. Uh, and again, next thought. 
I love the design for Trish's character and Spice Girl. The arithmetic symbols look so cool in the design, and I love that Araki had just added them because he thought that, oh yeah, this would look pretty cool. No big idea on that if we're going off of what he said directly, and I, I love that. It's just like, hey man, this, you know, this looks kind of fire, bro. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep this right here, and it's like, it did. <laughs> um, I do like her hair more in the manga because I felt that there were a lot of panels that made it a lot more lively and just look all around better than it did in the anime. But yeah, and that's it for Trish. Now on to Mista, I actually have no qualms with Mista or the use of his character. He was actually a side character that was used to his fullest potential. He was one of the most enjoyable characters there is, and I love him. Uh, Misa's conversations are some of the best things in JoJo. We need to get a spinoff of Mista talking with characters that have been in JoJo regardless of they died or not. Let's have a little... Just, just Mista gets a just a, an actor type of interview type thing going on. Not a podcast, but, you know, it's like where actors talk to other actors. That's that's exactly what Mista needs to be doing. I don't really have much to say on him, aside from the fact that I actually like, really did enjoy him. There's no things I would have had him rather doing or anything. I think he's probably one of the best adapted characters in this part, and everything in general so yeah good good on you mista you did a great job and great stand too and finally bruno well i want to say that the duo of giorno and bruno can be one of the most powerful things in jojo bruno on his own is a great leader he has everything that you would want in a core leader but the problem is he didn't have the resolve to go forward with the stances I mean, that's what giorno was there for Bruno was everything to his people. For those that need to find solace in something, he was able to have them join him. And those that needed help, he gave said help, but not some overindulgence or something that was intentionally made to have them idolize him and his position in the gangster world. He helps where he can and does what he's supposed to. And actually, carrying off of that thought and putting it here, he actually tells people to avoid that world as much as possible. He knows how difficult everything is in there. He also knows that it's nothing that people think that it is on the outside because he himself has been fooled to believe that Passione was better than it actually was. Uh, he definitely knew that it was bad, but it was just like it was a better bad than the actual bad that it was. They were selling and that had gone uh, against his core beliefs, but because how that world is set up and his position in it, the most logical thing to do would be to just carry that weight. Which is terrible because he's been carrying that weight his whole life. This is why him meeting Giorno matters so much. Passione without Giorno would have just ended up being the same sleeping slave lifestyle without anything being pushed. But it's not entirely Bruno's fault really. I think Bruno thought in the same way that Fugo did originally. Because it sounds insane to do what Giorno wanted to do because no one has even remotely pushed for that idea until he came. Giorno's resolve was the one to awaken the group, and you end up seeing the best of all of the characters in this uh, defense group, especially Bruno. Bruno has had the most growth in the part by far. While Giorno was born a natural born leader that just needed some polishing, Bruno was a leader that wasn't fully leading, and he became all of that and more. I want to say a prime example of Bruno becoming all that he was meant to be was seeing how he had functioned after dying and being brought back to life by Giorno. Oh, well, not brought back to life, uh, but more so Giorno giving Bruno a husk to inhabit. Bruno had been doing all that he could, knowing that he had not that much time left in his body. He just lived around to help everyone in the best way that he could. I think that you can get an understanding of what I'm talking about when he talks to Giorno in the car. The conversation between those two was some of the most chilling stuff in that part because you just hear this Bruno that's already fully come to terms that he's he's dead. It's just that he wants to do the best that he could before he's completely gone. Also, cool little thought thing here for those that didn't exactly see it. So I'm not sure how many people know about the whole Giorno being Jesus allegory thing. You know, his ability to give life. His dad is technically God because Dio means God, etc, etc. So Giorno had brought back Bruno in more than one way. There was him literally reviving him. And then there was him, quote, reviving, end quote him. That really sounds weird. I really hate that. I can't say quote-unquote. Like, I, people know what I mean, but just, it's whatever. 
that second chance at life wasn't just Bruno continuing on, but instead Bruno being reborn into the person that he wanted to be. Giorno's resolve had given him life and awakened him in the beginning when they first met, giving him a new life to for him to go forward with, but then after that happened again, actually with Bruno dying, being reawakened in a literal sense had happened too. So that's just a little cool thing there. I actually have so much that I do want to say on Bruno, uh, like just all in general, is that, that, that last bit of him going into the clouds and all that is just full on explain to Jorno that everything's okay that was beautiful and all that there was there's, there's so much on his character but i feel like i'm pushing for i'm pushing like the time limit so i think that i should be finished up here honestly this here enough should be a general thought though of to what i wanted to say about the character but yeah um i'll be probably doing a character analysis on bruno specifically or even multiple i don't know i just i'm multiplying like two but yeah uh and again you can support the channel and get your 14-day free trial of Crunchyroll Premium. Click the link in the description below. That's crunchyroll.com slash KLEB. And that's it. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see videos on other parts of JoJo or other anime, be sure to leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. I'm streaming more often now. You can follow my Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram in the description. You can join my Discord if you want. And to make it easier, that's... That'll, that'll be it, because this is already a fairly long video. So, hopefully, I'll see you on the next one. Until then, peace out, and Godspeed.